What's up, guys? You are now listening to the Pixels Get Me podcast. It is it is December first, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, guys. Did, did that skip, dude? Yeah, of course it did. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's time for my segment, dude. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember we discussed it. Yeah. There's a piece that I think I need to say first before we get into no. the individual segments. Oh no, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Yeah, Alright. No, yeah. I'll just I'll just hang tight. Yeah, just yeah, just go by, by the way, that's Iman. Alright, go ahead, Iman. Alright, so we we wanted to just say first of all, you know. Right, Curbs? Thanks. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Welcome guys. Welcome to E Monster and Curbs' uh podcast. Yeah. We're we... special guest host over here, Pixels. Yeah, yeah. We made this this to reach out to the community, you know, because we're like we're like real real and yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so my name is Mr. Kerbsavli, <laughs> and I am E Monster. Yeah. And we're also joined by KSM. Introduce yourself. Hey, okay. that's a good song. I like that. I like that. That's solid. Solid. All right. All right, Pixels. Let's hear about you a little bit now, my friend. Yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Who are you? Yeah. I mean, because it's our podcast, so they don't know who you are. Hey guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me on your podcast yeah don't expect it again who are you what do you want what do you do <laughs> i'm a i'm a streamer over on mixer uh i stream five nights a week i usually play dungeon crawlers and i also used to have a podcast but it appears that that's not a reality anymore <laughs> all right that's great now back to us all right Meanwhile, cool. what do we have on the articles what's first up on the well first on the articles i think we got mm 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 pg uh, M- what would you call M- this? M-O-R-P-G. What would you call this? Yeah. What would you call this? Yeah. It's it's an article, I guess, about breach. It's uh, something with words on a page talking about <laughs> breaches, early access. It, it, it's kind of interesting. But... All right, so so let's get Pixels to tell us a little bit more about this. All right, so. All right, and back to us. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, <laughs> so uh, real quick, like I know that. KSM kind of got the intro a little bit, but can we get like a little bit more intro from KSM before we get into oh, the articles? And okay. I'm, I'm the other guest host. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a okay. I'm He's the playing. other. He's the other host guest. Yeah, the other host guest. I, I didn't know anything about this, but yeah, I know. <laughs> I I do stream and mixer most nights, really late at nights because I have a kid. Um, I'm playing Far Cry at this time because I can't forget Zelda, so I need a terrible game. <laughs> to remind me that, you know, there's something else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm Can glad. We go and talk about Bridge. No. I'm glad Zelda had had a, I, I would say, positive effect. Do you think positive effect or negative effect on you? Uh, it's like, you know, like drugs. Uh, I don't know if it's positive or negative. Yeah, yeah. It. Understood. Understood. All right. So, uh, so yeah, what Iman and Curves were saying, this uh, article is about Breach going to start Steam Early Access in January 2019. Um, you can pre-order it right now at their uh, at their site, so that'll get you into that Early Access program. Um, but as of right now, they're doing their, their alpha test still. They're doing a stress test this weekend, actually, for about 70 hours I want to say at least 48 hours somewhere nearly three days of play um, normally they just do a couple 48 hours thank you firebird um, normally they just do a couple hours a night or a couple hours a day they've been extending these sessions just kind of testing server stability um, but yeah it's a it's a game we've covered previously um, it's pretty exciting we do have uh, a couple keys from the developers so I gave one away um, earlier before we started the podcast, and then after this podcast, we will be giving away another one. Um, and if uh, if you're interested, you know, feel free to reach out to me, and I'll see what I can do um, to get more keys. But uh, but yeah, solid game, dungeon crawler, where you run around, and you have a you have an arch nemesis player character, so it's like four v one versus environment. Um, a lot of fun. A lot of potential. All right, go ahead, guys. What what, what else are we talking about? All right, so now we're going to move on to something interesting. So um... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait. See, I haven't got to play Breach yet, so 
Why? Uh, Tell us why. By, by the yeah. way, congratulations, Iman. <laughs> Iman you. just won our first ticket of or the first uh, giveaway code for the weekend. So we'll we'll see you online, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice, dude. I nice. got the weekend. So, but I, I do want you to kind of tell our viewers about Breach and how like how the gameplay feels. Uh, since okay. you've been playing since uh, since beta, yeah, it's since, since pre-alpha alpha, alpha. Right. since pre-alpha alpha. Um, yeah, it's got a uh, honestly, it's kind of clunky to stream. Um, that's one thing that they really haven't optimized yet, so it's kind of a bummer uh, because yeah. my computer runs absolutely awful when I try to stream it. I think KSM can can agree on that. Yeah, it's really good game, but it's like two frames a second probably. Yeah. Really? On his computer, yeah. yeah. Really he, he's got Ouch. he's got the potato PC, right? You got a potato. Hey, let me send you mine. Let me yeah. send you mine real quick. Into Dutcher, into the <laughs> intro gaming computer. I was saying. Nah, you, cool, cool. cool. In, yeah, entry level stuff. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, so it might not play on on entry level uh, computers, but as it gets closer to beta and you know full. Uh, full release i think they're gonna do a lot of focus on the optimizations it's kind of one of the biggest yeah. uh player concerns at the moment um especially on the uh on the uh the streaming side um firebird is chiming in saying i learned that i shouldn't play reaper yeah reaper is one of the characters in the uh one of the classes you can play um it has a really cool like six uh six schools of magic system where you have like three classes in each school of magic um and then basically it's a dungeon crawler so you can have like a a demon hunter and a tank like a mana warrior a healer like an arcane mender and then maybe like a like a damage or let's say a crowd controller they just released the chronomancer th uh this oh, weekend nice. so so this is a this is the class that they put in the initial announced trailer and then finally we're able to see it I haven't played it yet. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to unlock it yet. I don't, I don't know what to spend my money on. There's several characters I want to spend the money on, which they just kind of give you every weekend. They give you a couple more sparks to unlock more characters. So um, now, this money that you're talking about, what kind of money is this? Like your money? Like actual yeah, so this is, dollar money? Or? Yeah, so this is the spark. This is the spark money. I think the spark money you can earn by playing. And then the other... No, maybe the spark money is what you what you use to for microtransactions so it'll have it'll be a free-to-play game with the micro microtransaction support so there's one premium currency like you know typical uh microtransaction games and then they have the play currency so you can unlock everything just by playing and you need to level up everything anyway so you need to it's very similar to warframe by leveling up the different classes you unlock things for other classes and um and kind of understand the game better in, in more ways than one as well. You, I don't think you'd be able to to play the game and enjoy it just one class the whole time. I think it makes sense to uh, to kind of branch out. And Firebird saying to use the Chronomancer in solo play, and it's pretty good. Movement slowed, but the attacks are too nice. Okay, cool. So so the Chronomancer, yeah, slows down time for all the bad guys. Kind of gives the good guys an, an advantage. Um, it looks it looks promising. I just haven't I haven't been able to play yet to speak to it. But yeah, that's all, all right. I've got. Anyone else have anything to say on the topic before we get moving on? I don't know. All right, Emo, what's next on the docket? So up this next up. up next we got a personal favorite of of our special guest host here, and as well as mine and Curbs. Yeah. You have they put out a Twitter post. It's called lights, camera, action, tenno. Oh. So in in this Twitter post, they're asking us, us players to uh, go into their capture form and take pictures of awesome battles that we could create. Now this capture form, what is what exactly is that? What do you do? What do you need? What do you have? What's the it's, name of it? Oh, uh, what the? the, the game is Warframe. Going to detail. What do you get? What do you need? What do you do? <laughs> So basically, all it is is it's a, it's a scene that you set up, and you can set up all the all your players, all your buddies, and you can do action scenes where we have one of me and Pixels somewhere uh, doing something. I think, right, Pixels? Yes. Yeah, we had some on our Discord. I was messing around with. Uh, I like the the photography aspect 
of Captura, like being able yeah. to change. Um, you get, you kind of get like an environment to play in. You can put your friends. You can put. I guess you can spawn bad guys, right? Um, you can do all this stuff. You you set up this scene in a warehouse or in a factory or in an underground cavern, and then you spawn bad guys and you start shooting and you start flying around like a ninja does in space, and uh, and you're killing everything. But you can pause that at any moment and rotate the camera zoom you can put words on the wall if you want to put some words on the floor or on the on the wall um you can add uh like a depth of field so you can you can have like a really nice photographic i i would say professional level photography sliders you know where you can kind of you know bring in the background make it portrait mode like on an iphone or whatever but like a more professional version of that where you can kind of change everything um I really like the idea of having your own custom statue if the scene's really awesome. You know, like, especially if it was, like, a stream scene where, like, the four of us were playing, you know? And then we <laughs> captured this awesome, like, diorama almost capturing, like, a night on the stream, you know? And just have that, like, that would, that would be awesome. I don't know how much I mean, the custom we, we statues all cost. Have rhinos, we all have rhinos, so that'd be pretty awesome. We could do a rhino versus everything. You yeah, know? it does. It wouldn't have to be like it wouldn't have to be all rhinos. I mean, it'd be cool to see everyone's like favorite fashion frame like caught at that moment. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, I mean, uh, I play Gara. My favorite fashion frame is Gara because you know, you gotta put a wall around everything. Mm-hmm. And it's great because total defense. Yeah, it is pretty handy, and and the wall. I wonder what that would look like on the uh on the statue like if we would just see part of the statue having like a piece of the wall you know like that would be, would that'd be so cool. around it like it would just be completely around the statue yeah it, it depends what you capture in the capture scene but yeah that'd be that'd be really cool actually so as a complete noob that's never played this game before in my life or use this mode are you telling me that if i enter the matrix i will get a statue Yes. It, uh, as <laughs> what? In, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> what is that ex doing? What? Oh, <laughs> you're looking at the stream. Yeah. So for yeah. those not on audio, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or watching this live, you get treated to the random memes that people are saying in reply to this Twitter post, which is some of the best parts of Twitter. But yeah, there oh, was yeah, a definitely. there was a there was a head banging head smashing keyboard Excalibur frame. So that was kind of interesting animation there. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of people complaining about how I have no idea how to run Captura because it's not, it's honestly like, you know, not the most user friendly thing. And this game's a, a shooter, you know, most of the guys who were, I don't know, good at a shooter are not good at photography. So it's like an interesting I know, I feature. I mean, they did that last competition where uh, you could you could go into the Plains Eidolon and do it there. Yeah. And they did one with uh, Zephyr flying all over the place. I think they were they were doing uh, was that was that a capture scene or was that a like a that YouTube a video where you win platinum and stuff? Like there was, it was a, so yeah, it was a YouTube video that you had to put together to yeah. uh, promote um, help promote um, what is that place? Yeah, Plains of Eidolon, <laughs> I think. Yeah, the planes Eidolon. Yeah, and the winners they got every prime pack from the beginning to the end of the game. That's insane. So even even the prime packs that they haven't got come out yet, they're getting. <laughs> so so selling their account, which is against term of service, I think, but selling their account could be worth like thousands of dollars since some well, of mean, those primes are un unattainable. Since the beginning, like they yeah. get the full prime pack, right? The full, the full prime package, the the hundred and twenty dollar prime package. Yeah. That has that Which comes you with can't all, buy the, all the platinum, all the uh, all the frames, like all the like all the parts for the frame, all the uh, prime version, all the prime gear that comes with it. Yeah, it's insane. All of it. <laughs> Pretty Plus, awesome. I think the ninety day boosters, which they all stack, by the way, so. They have like millions of days of boost. Yeah, you have <laughs> like five years of of boost. Yeah, very nice. I know a guy that has seven seven years of boosts. <laughs> That's so. awesome. 
I just started playing the game, so I'm really don't not to. Are you, you, you started playing oh, Warframe? Fun. Do you know? Yeah, on the Switch. Nice. Oh, nice. Uh, Do you know what MR you are? Have you taken a couple MR tests? Nope. Okay, cool. I so, hardly yeah. understand the game sometimes. I got stuck in one of the stations on Earth. I don't know what to do. So I feel kind of dumb with the game. So I, I kind of stopped so playing it. What you do is you run around and you shoot stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just, like, I just got that much around and um, they just kill me instantly. So I can't really <laughs> do much. <laughs> In the game's defense, it's just as bad for everyone else who tries to play. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like I, yeah. I, I would not be I would not be playing Warframe as much as I did without this community because these guys were like mentoring me almost every minute of the stream telling me like what works and what doesn't work. So it was really cool to learn the game yeah. from like guys who've been playing it for years. Yeah, it was also to fun it. to it was also fun to like invest in a new player you know i mean to me like no like literally i like I, i've really felt better investing into like curbs and pixels as new players like getting on frames getting them slots getting them boosters whatever it didn't matter it was it was even better to do <laughs> yeah what were you saying ksm Oh no, it's like, I, w I was going to say that it's satisfying to play through somebody else, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they got to see our responses to the storyline and stuff like that. Like, like Iman would be like, oh, this is a good part, this is a good part, I'm going to watch you. <laughs> like, I'm going to watch your response, you know? Like, yeah. It's, it's not even that, like, so when I went through, um, it was months and months between um parts of the story so like yeah. i would get a part and i would wait six months then i get the next part yeah and we're just but flying like, through these story quests in a matter in of two they're, weeks they're already yeah. there and yeah. you're like i get to go from one point to the next point to the next point and i get to just watch you guys enjoy it it's like so much fun <laughs> yeah yeah i just linked my my prime account and got a couple of, of packs and weapons uh, nice i haven't played with them yet because uh so uh, like my switch to that where it was completely dead and uh, oh. it wasn't charging for some reason so i couldn't actually look into it because that's the time i play with my switch are those available on switch Not yeah you just them? yeah your warframe account is linked to twitch right that's what we're talking yeah. about yeah yeah twitch, and right? apparently i can copy my warframe account to the switch if i wanted to yep yes pc that players can Hey, did we say what episode it is in the podcast? Uh, yeah, this is uh, episode 11. Wow, that's crazy. Sir, yes, sir. All right, you guys want to move on to the next article? Yeah, we can move on to the next article, but somebody right. better call the ambulance, cause, or the ambulance, because we got some butthurt fans coming. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a, wham right, if we had a ambulance, a yeah, if we had a ambulance animation right now, this would be when we should do it. So this one is a... Uh, an article from uh, comicbook.com. Um, so Amazon was doing a uh, a Kingdom Hearts three uh, like exclusive DLC Keyblade thing that was going to happen with people who were pre-ordering, and uh, and all this stuff was going on, and they were hyping it the heck up like just seven days, <laughs> just like wait for the Kingdom Hearts three pre-order selection at Amazon or whatever. And then they uh, and they said they were gonna debut a new trailer, and all this stuff. And like Kingdom Hearts three trailers right now are like a hot commodity, and it's making people just cry and, and cry themselves <laughs> to sleep and waiting till January 29th or whatever. But um, but yeah, so they the time came and they played a shorter version of an already released trailer, and then the the fans raged raged violently. And like, there's some awesome, there's some awesome like memes that people were doing on Twitter. And it has like Sora and the death scene. And it's like, continue or load game. It's like all the Kingdom Hearts fans after getting baited by Amazon. And uh, yeah, there was just a whole lot of crazy stuff. So Amazon responded. <laughs> um, they said, hey, hey, hey uh, we know that the awesome new DLC that was going to be there. Um, was going to be an exclusive from us. However, um, 
they didn't give it to us. So, I mean, we can't... They, they just didn't give it to us. So they blame Square. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> just like companies blaming companies for not... Uh... Did Square come back at it? No. What's that? So I was wondering if Square came back at it. Yeah, Both so... Them blaming Square? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, like after after the news cycle, the twelve hour news cycle happens. Like I don't know what happens after that. You know, you don't really see the the secondary effects. But usually, I mean, the companies if they get called out, they don't usually respond. You know, like it's like not a good situation to walk into. So you just kind of wait and let the like, fans. I think more companies. <laughs> <laughs> Block Amazon Games. Is anyone really too shocked by this, though, considering, like, of not getting something from Kingdom Hearts, considering the past several years they've been putting Pushed up the same trailer? And they, pushing yeah, like the same, Yeah, and, like, the yeah. same trailer that's half-finished, that they don't have all the color rendering, and most of it doesn't have sound. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not really too surprised. Yeah, Firebird in chat saying that there's also a Keyblade for pre-ordering through Sony. There's probably going to be a, a GameStop exclusive uh, Keyblade as well. And he's saying you literally cannot get every Keyblade in the game unless you buy more than one copy. And for the completionists, uh, that's going to hurt. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. That makes me... So, would you guys actually use that Keyblade? Because in this type of game, they tend to actually be overpowered in comparison to where you are in the game? No, you absolutely well, want you... the best possible Keyblade at any moment, so... <laughs> like, oh, and and the Keyblade levels up too, so like, if you have like a, a better Keyblade, then, and you know, they give different things, like let you do more, more magic abilities if you want to do more magic abilities, or more combos if you want to just do some crazy aerial combos. Um, you'll, you'll move through the different Keyblades as needed, but like, if you see a streamer, for instance, you know, like cutting through a fight, um, the uh, you'll be like, oh man, like how is he doing this good? And it's because like he could potentially gotten hooked up by the three different companies who are doing the pre-order, so he has the keyblades that could bring him up a notch, you know. So it's kind of kind of a bummer. So I mean, even if you pre-ordered it through all three different companies, how would you get it all in the same game? Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe it's just uh, like codes that you enter in the game, like I don't know, like Borderlands codes. We this is the first time. This is the first time they're doing something like this. There's no, yeah. there's no. Well, it's also the first time they're doing it on Xbox as well. Yeah, exactly. There's no DLC that's ever been for a Kingdom Hearts game. Like Kingdom Hearts was before DLC was a big thing. You know, like DLC is like life now. You know, like if your game doesn't have DLC when it launches or has plans for DLC when it launches, it's basically dead. You know, it's like, whoa, like, what? You have to have DLC now, so, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, final thoughts, questions, answers? <laughs> okay, so you got anything to throw in on this, buddy? I'll be I'll be playing it, but I'm not going to be streaming it. I don't think it's a family game for us. Like we've played through all of it, all 1.5, 2.5, 2.8. So um, yeah, we'll yeah, be playing as a family on the couch. But uh, my wife's already uh, claimed the protector for when that comes home. Yeah, I've never played the game, so I really have no idea what what it's about. I'll say that it's very similar in what the Zelda reference was earlier. I'm not sure if that was on stream or not, but. Um, yeah, it'll mess with your head, dude. Oh, yeah. There was a. I try it. Oh, nice, Firebird! It comes out it comes out on Firebird's oh, birthday. Yeah, that's Happy great. birthday, it does dude! Come out on his birthday. Yeah, one of the things about Kingdom Hearts, like they, uh, like there's so much so much cool backstory with Kingdom Hearts. Like one thing was um, how it even came to be. Uh, Disney and SquareSoft <laughs> were sharing uh, a building. And I want to say it was in Tokyo or something like that. And uh, they just had an elevator meeting, no joke. And they said, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, Mickey could be in a Final Fantasy game? And like, that's, that's how it started. You know, they just, yeah, they made a joke in the elevator. Firebird confirmed. Thank you, man. You know, and then they're like, yeah, but what would that look like? You know, and like, they'd never had, you know, before, 
before Epic Mickey. They didn't really ever have like a Mickey adventure game since like NES days. Like that was the last time we had Mickey in an adventure game, and they really wanted to keep and it him. Was a side scroller. <laughs> yeah, it was a side scroller. It wasn't even like you know what games are today. You know, so it was like, man, like how can we make Mickey this iconic video game character now? Because they know that that's a space they need to break into. You know, um, so there's that, and then there's the other part about just. Um, Man, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. There was the elevator meeting, and then, okay, yeah, so <laughs> the original Kingdom Hearts uh, writer, director, um, he was he was pitching the game, and he pitched it to the Final Fantasy team, and one of the Final Fantasy creators, I'm not sure which one, um, he said, yeah, it's not complicated enough, man. Like, seriously, if you're going to make, like, Final Fantasy characters in a game, it cannot be linear at all. Like, it has to be so complicated that, like, people are going to be researching this for 30 years, trying to figure out what happened. And he's like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, I, I can I can add some more backstory, some more weird stuff. He's like, yeah, do that, and then add even more. Like, make it completely, completely <laughs> insane. And then I now, right now I mean, yeah. yeah, but now, if you, if you look at the Kingdom Hearts you know, trilogy, and it's before three, you know, like, we're talking about nine games, really, three trilogy, yeah. tr three trilogies, um, it is a complete insanity, like, how the, the storyline goes, like, you're like, I'm sorry, this guy's a clone of how many people? Like, what? And, like, they all have the same eyes, but they have different eyes, and they have the same hair, but they have different hair, and they have the same outfits, but they're different outfits, and you're just like, what is going on? So you have to, like, have a Wikipedia page open just to understand, like, or you can have a Google Docs and just write it down. Yeah, but there, the Google Docs that are out there explaining everything are freaking massive. Like, there's so much going on, you know, where people are trying to... Most of them aren't even correct. Yeah, because they're missing certain pieces from the 3DS version or the DS version or, you know... And, uh, and yes, Axel looks like he's act he is going to play a big part in this Firebird. Like, they're really nice. putting a lot of stuff on him, so... Yeah, he's an awesome character. Like he, 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 so, he, so he could use some That's what you should do. You should, uh, you should write us a Google Docs story and how everything fits together. That's not gonna happen. So what else we got on the uh, thing? So the next <laughs> thing that we have for the thing is uh, a very special thing. Oh, the thing for the thing. That's about all I got. That's, that's about all there is to it. Moving all right, on. So, so there's a no, new. Moving on. We're done with the. We're not going to talk about... Okay, so we're not going to talk about Project Babel, a new smartphone RPG by Final Fantasy VII writer? No, we... we that was a... My couch pixels, you know, you should start a podcast. That was a, that was an amazing intro to that topic. <laughs> Go ahead and tell us what you think about it. All right, so, uh, Colopal... I don't know how to pronounce this, but Colopal... Colopal. Is it Colopal? C-O-L-O-P-L. I don't know. They don't announced, worry, just move on. It's a terrible name. They announced a new uh, Japanese RPG project called project Babel for smartphones so uh the um the writer of final fantasy 7 uh dragon dragon's dogma online and then music from final fantasy 12 uh sounds like being it, so the one that was not very good uh, I, don't, I don't know i think all final fantasy music which, has its place so which which 12 though because like <laughs> Not twelve two? Like was there a twelve two? I don't know. So there was like there was like ten and then eleven and then ten two and then some other thing. So <laughs> wouldn't that be twelve? And then everything after twelve is like MMO something or other. And so you get to the most recent 15, one. Fifteen, I think it's fifteen. because it went. I'm pretty sure it went through like three stages of where it was thirteen, then fourteen, then fifteen. So yeah, it's like yeah, thir so. thirteen one, thirteen two, thirteen three, and lightning returns, which is, yeah, don't don't play lightning returns. All right, yeah, so thanks, my bird. <laughs> so for the uh, save. So before we we wrap this one up, um, they're going to be releasing more information um, at Colobal Fest two thousand eighteen, which is on December fifteenth. So we'll hear about this some more in a couple weeks, but it's going to be on iOS and Android. I'm all about it. All right, next thing. I'm confused about what is Colopal Fest, though. It's just yeah. every company yeah. has their own thing now, man. Just Still like uh, Path, so of, are, Path of are Exile. We gonna Pixels, are we going to have a Pixels, E-Monster, and Curbs Fest, too, then? Absolutely, oh. dude. It's going to be It's gonna be at the uh, the stop button bar thing. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, we gotta have we got to have Firebird bring the, the, the dip, man. He's got that uh, buffalo, buffalo chicken dip, man. 
Booyah. Awesome. I love it. All right, Firebird, you're on the books for dip. All right, so uh, this is an article that Iman shared. So go ahead, Iman. So it's an article about Red Dead Online. Oh, my gosh. Red Dead Online is out? My God. Uh, I think it's out for just Battle Royale. At the, um, what you call the, uh, the initial it's facts. A... <laughs> but I haven't been able to get into it, so it's whatever. But uh, a lot of people have been complaining about what happens in online MMO. <laughs> no, what happens in online MMOs, Ima? Please, Everybody please. wants to be that, that pirate guy. Oh. Or that, you know... A shady um, individual oh, that doesn't oh, follow oh, the oh. rules of combat? That yeah. That scallion varmint. And people are complaining, like, they, they can't go out and catch, like, for nice long rides and catch, like, short horses and stuff. Like, mm. and long what do you think was going to happen? And, you know. Yeah. Currency is a big issue right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Firebird is talking about for currency. Yeah, I'm lost. But but we'll let him. We'll let him come back to that. Um, yeah. So uh, I think the problem is is that people watched a lot of like hateful eight type stuff. So like, oh wait, you know I can kill everyone. So I mean like, there's more to the game than that, you know. But at the same time, like that's all people know is horseback and killing each other. So yeah, what do we expect? Well, I mean, what do you expect though? If you play like, like I played Eve Online, and it, it started out as a wild, wild west. There was no rules, and the players made the rules. Like right now, there's only a handful of people playing. So I mean, once there's enough people playing, there's going to be rules that people are going to put into place that are going to overtake almost all the servers. Like, <laughs> um, if I could, I'd like to address what Firebird said just there. Yeah, go for uh, it. With the little amounts of money and everything is expensive i currently there is no microtransaction type thing in to buy in-game currency but firebird with everything i'm seeing they're definitely laying the groundwork for that and the likelihood is that's why from what i can tell honestly they're gonna pull a gta with like shark cards and they're gonna it's going to be ridiculously expensive, or at least that's my guess anyway, from the way everything seems to be coming out. It isn't is very game, fun, though. So. Sorry, GTA, what? Isn't that game GTA with a Western skin? It's GTA with yeah. horse. Skin. Pretty much. Except it's way better. It's a way better game. But... Somehow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like getting mauled by a bear. Yeah, Firebird. I, I think it's going to ramp up a lot from that, though. Dude. Yeah, a guy I work with showed me a, a video of him getting mauled by a bear. It's oh. pretty bad. <laughs> it is. I got mauled by a bear. I probably got mauled by the same bear. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good idea. It just comes at you and it. just starts eating your face off. I tried to fight it with my bare fist, man. That didn't go very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. You gotta, like, throw your right hook a thousand times and level it up, and then you might have a chance. <laughs> One punch, man. At that point, you can just jump across the map, completing the entire story without actually doing it. But yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like the Battle Royale mode has, like, missions. So they were talking about one mission where um, they had a hogtied outlaw... And they had to drag the outlaw somewhere. And meanwhile, the other three people in the squad were kind of shooting defense as one guy was kind of dragging the dude. So it's like BR with a little bit of questing here and there. Yeah. Kind of interesting. But every game, you know what happens? You don't have to do questing in, in, in most of it, right? There's always the wild e-monster ready to steal that from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then that wild e-monster gets creamed. Hey, a wild I'm not saying I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Could be a wild pixels. Mm -hmm. I feel like he'd just surrender everything. <laughs> uh, no, I think Pixels would be like quite a formidable player. Like, think about I it. Mean, Thank you for that. But I'm not sure. Way, he plays as, soon as, you, and... as soon as you teach him how to read a map in the game, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking baby steps guys I gotta know how to read a map in the game as long as you don't show them there's fishing we're good 
Is there fishing? Like, in order to rob him, no, you have no. to show it, him how if, to use the map so he can get to you, and then... If there is fishing, I'm going to go buy an Xbox and Red Dead 2 right now. Uh, there is... Yeah. Remember what happened with the game that we played? Every game? Every game that we played that has fishing in it? it. The one that we played for like two hours and never went back. All right. I got you. I got a yeah, boat. I, I, I remember I was that game. To take you out on the boat to go fishing, and then you never came back, man. I remember that game. All right. So, well, so... yeah, because you ran out of fuel halfway through, and you had to get Oak to come get us. Yeah, that was funny. All right. <laughs> just, just to, just to explain to the viewership who may not know, but I have a weird um, addiction to fishing in games. Whether or not, whether or not it it uh, it's easy or difficult or whatever, I just like just being in a game environment, and clicking a mouse and picking up fish or boots or whatever it is that you pick up in a lake. You know, so just a thing. All right, next article. All right, so oh, there you. That's our job. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get hey to guys, call next article. Hey guys, um, I, I, I'm I'm done. If you guys don't have anything, maybe we should move Pixel. to the next article. Iman, are you okay with the? Are, are we done here? Do you think? Yeah, we're I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I think okay. Pixels. Uh, I think Pixels should bring in the next article. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. But actually, I'm gonna have KSM di- now. Go ahead, Pixels. <laughs> yeah, Do, Pixels. Next and uh, Firebird just dropped a reference to. Uh, he said, "If you want a real fishing challenge, play Stardew Valley." So I have Stardew Valley on the Switch, and then once I started fishing, I stopped doing everything else in the game. So, yep, that happened. All right, so uh, I don't know. I don't know what happens in Stardew Valley, like story-wise. I just fish now. All right, so uh, what what do we got, guys? Well, you're bringing this one in. Come on. Yeah, you're bringing it in. What are you doing? We told oh, you. All right, cool. In. Sorry. All right, so uh, so there's a new uh, game on. Right, hold on, cut. Hold on, cut. 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 We need more enthusiasm. Enthusiastic. Up, <laughs> You know, uh, further and more up. Come on, push it. You got it. All right. I'm not really this excited about this one, so I don't know if I can oh, channel that enthusiasm. God, that's not in the script, Pixels. <laughs> Follow the script, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Our so... creative director, KSM, is getting irritated. Come on, man. You paid a lot of money for <laughs> So much time. So much time. Yeah. Just... Let's go. No, you can't do that. All right, so a long time ago, Blizzard had a group of people who was just goofing off and they made a game called Hearthstone. That game exploded. It was a team of four people or something like that. It exploded into a $1.4 billion uh, digital card game market place. So um, I think people like to copy and paste that kind of success. So Valve, uh, our wonderful Steam friends, um, released a digital card game called Artifact. Uh, it's Dota 2 inspired, so it probably has some Dota 2 characters that people have been playing for the last <laughs> eight years. It probably has some uh, some abilities, <laughs> some hats. I don't know because it's Valve. They probably has some hats. hats. Yeah, probably they, has they, hats, they, they yeah. like hats, so it's probably a thing. Um, and they're uh, they're um, what is it? Rare hats and epic hats. <laughs> yeah, really epic hats. Um, but yeah, this is the. Uh, the first major non VR game release from Valve because they've been focusing a lot on the Rift and all that. Um, but doesn't mean that this might not be a VR card game because that's been a thing as well that people have been trying to build as a VR card game that's actually uh, pretty cool and inter- interactive and immersive. So, um, but yeah, we'll see. It looks like um, so it's gonna, maybe going to be like Yu Gi Oh! in VR. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And like when you lay down cards, like the environment changes and stuff. There's some really cool right. VR card games out there that that do a good job. They just don't have like the the professional card game designers that are able to like write out combos. You know that, what Magic: The Gathering and and Hearthstone and Yu Gi Oh have become. You know, basically the highest level chess matches. You know. Um, and Firebird is saying this game doesn't fall under the normal refund policy. Interesting. So maybe they they huh. had less time to return it or something? I don't know. Explain. What do you mean? 
like you have all eternity to return it. <laughs> Once you claim your starter deck and card packs, you will be ineligible for an automatic refund or artifact via Steam. Before claiming your starter decks and card packs, you will be able to play games against bots and other players using pre-constructed. Yeah, so it sounds like since there's probably card trading, they don't want you to just be able to create an account, get the cards, trade the cards, and then cancel your account. Um, that makes sense. So or refund your account, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm glad they I'm glad they figured that out. I mean, I'm sure the cards that you get out of those starter decks might not be very good, or maybe the card packs you just keep going. Yeah, that's something that people do in like these these mobile games. They keep recreating a game and go through that seven minute tutorial and get that 15,000 whatever currency that really costs like cash dollars and they just keep going it until they get like a five star angel card or whatever so they have a chance against people who are spending you know half their paycheck on a, on a gacha game system you know so yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense um right now artifact is only on pc though so we'll see if if valve kind of goes into uh, a mobile side because hearthstone on mobile has been pretty successful too but uh but yeah that's all i've got guys i don't know have you played hearthstone on mobile i've played hearthstone on mobile yes yeah what do you think about it um i think hearthstone's a solid game it's just i have to be in a in a card card game mood like when i'm in a card game mood i absolutely love it um, and then all the other times where I'm kind of bored and I'm like just flipping through games on my phone and I start up Hearthstone, I'm like, what are you doing, man? I'm not even in a card game mood right now. Like, I'm not going to play this. See, this happens to me every time because I have it on my phone. I open it. I look at it. Yeah, the I loading screen it. The loading screen takes long enough it, that it makes me change my mind. I yeah. close it and I play Pokemon instead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, I, hear, I hear you, man. Like, there's, and there's way more, I don't know, like the amount of time it takes to get somewhere in Hearthstone, I don't think the game is short enough. Like, Clash Royale is short enough. A three-minute game is where you're like, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this, and if I'm going to win or lose, I'm still going to get six gems. You know, it's like, whatever. Um, so, Hearthstone is way, way more complicated than that. You're like, oh, okay, maybe I'll do the story thing. All right, well, the story thing's taking too long. All right, I'm going to close. I mean, I'm going to do that story thing again? Ugh. You know, like, it's it's kind of kind of a bummer. Firebird's got a good point there. Oh, um, go for it. Read it out. Firebird brought up the point that um, Steam's best course of action should be to let people download it for free and use those pre-constructed decks to see if they like it. And then if they do buy the, and when they do buy the game, kind of like a starter pack, you know, or um, an activation pack or whatever you want to call it, uh, then you have your starter pack. No refunds to cry. <laughs> Yes, uh, I completely agree. Like, uh, Hearthstone, I'm pretty sure, is still free. Uh, I don't think there's ever been anything that's cost money except for their expansion packs. Yeah, yeah so, so I mean, yeah, get barrier to entry nowadays, if you want to have a successful game, like if there's any game developers listening here in the future on this podcast, um, yeah, if you want your game to be successful, just make it free to play and figure out a way to monetize it. Yeah, MTX all the way, bro. <laughs> Pixels, there was a real loud beep just there. That you're going to Dude, there's not a loud beep, man. There absolutely was. All right, cool. I'll have to check that. I'm just saying. Check yeah, the yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Anything else? I try to be discreet about things. Ah, oh, you tried. <laughs> All right. So, case if you want to bring up the next one. We're article, winning our podcast, man. Why did we even bring him on, Emo? Because <laughs> he's our special guest, man. <sighs> Yeah, he's special sometimes. Yeah, it's very. He, he's he, a lets, us, he lets us come to his podcast, so we must well let him come to our podcast. You know yeah, but his podcast is just a rip off of our podcast. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Casey, you want right. to bring it? You want to bring in the next one, Casey? Which one was the Which one was the next one? Uh, I'm not in charge. I'm just the Ars Technica latest Windows 10 update. It's yeah. got like, it's got like. Oh, the one that breaks your windows. Yeah, yeah. That one. do it. You got this, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm ready for that. You guys are in charge. I don't want to. I don't want to step we, in. See, we believe in you. Unlike Pixels, we don't believe in him as much. <laughs> it's not the, isn't that the Oculus one? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. I... the one with the lead. 
the what the what? No, just the, the windows. <laughs> Come on, you got it. Where's that one at? I don't know. It says it's something about <laughs> Windows 10 and it's breaking things. You got this. Go on, bro. Oh yeah, the one that 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 gets you like all hacked by Chinese hackers or something that you guys had at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's that the only one, one. That one is three stories away. Oh, yeah. see, I'm too far away. We still have three stories, guys. Can you can you believe this? All right. Wait, what? Okay. All right, Curbs, curbs, go ahead. Can, bring, can we can we up. can we bring up the pace right, a little bit? All right, all right. So the next article is the uh, latest Windows 10 update. Uh, it's breaking the media players. Uh, 32 app, or win 32 apps in general, apparently, according to the app. And there is uh, apparently important data loss bugs, specifically bugs that are in your computer, according to this picture. I don't know how. <laughs> The update. I don't, know, I don't know how I feel about bugs in my computer, man. Yeah, personally, I'm not a fan of that. I have like a like a professional like vacuum thing that I use to clean mine. I don't like that. I don't. I don't. Oh, oh, nice gift there, buddy. Yeah, and the picture, the picture that we are currently seeing in this article is some sort of sexual act, I believe, between Dude. two beetles, and it's making me uncomfortable. Oh my gosh! All right. Oh my so, so before we move on to the next article, um. <laughs> If you're using if you're using Windows and uh, Windows 10, and you're getting the monthly updates, um, just know that every time you accept an update, um, they're not doing a very good job on the QA side. So you could have a really bad computer that doesn't boot up anymore, and then you have to recover and you have a September update, and then you it starts asking for the updates again, which are going to break your computer again. So um, what I've been doing for the last three months is uh whenever my computer says it wants to update i say no and every time i sh shut down my computer i don't say install updates and shut down i just say shut down and also anytime that it randomly boots up and it's like hey i'm installing updates i'm doing my thing um i immediately just turn it off and let it do a different boot where it's not installing updates and uh meanwhile while that while that does you know, make your computer susceptible to bad things because every month these security updates are fixing all kinds of root kits security and terrible, things. terrible things that other countries or or terrorists or hackers are doing to your computer. Um, you should look at, you know, be an informed computer user and look at what patches are really bad and install those manually. You don't need to actually use Windows Update. Just saying. Take take control yeah. of your computer. All right. So Pixels, didn't oh. this happen to you a while ago then? Like where your, your Windows tried to update? And hey, then... don't you have first-hand experience? Yeah, that's why I'm saying for the last three months I've said no updates, and I just installed the patches. <laughs> that I was need. such a bad yeah. night because it broke it broke your stream. It broke it everything. Broke. It broke everything. See bad. Windows, get your act together, thought... man. You're messing with no. Pixel stream. <laughs> and I thought Windows never broke. No, it's uh, it's a wreck. <laughs> All right, fix this. Go ahead. All right, next article. Uh, so this was an article that came out on the twenty seventh. So uh, three days ago, four days ago, um, they were talking about there was a leak that Google might be bringing Project Fi to iPhone, Samsung, and OnePlus. Um, Project Fi, uh, I use it because I have a Pixel. Um, I think Iman, you also have a Pixel. Yes, I have a Pixel too. Cool. Yeah, so I have a Pixel 1. My wife has a Pixel 2. Um, the Pixel 3 is also eligible to use uh, Project Fi, as well as like a couple Motos, like a Moto Z4 and a couple other phones. Not, not a huge selection of phones, and that's kind of like the big thing that keeps you from using the service, which the service is actually pretty decent. Um, so it was a rumor, and then it was confirmed yesterday, because we got, me and my wife both got emails from Project Fi saying, Project Fi is now called Google Fi. And these following devices are now able to be brought in. So now everything is uh, everything that's I, I want to say 70% of the American smartphone market could jump in and and get on Google Fi. Um, definitely more than 70% on the on the other side because OnePlus and Samsung are kind of all over the place. iPhones too, but um, but it's really cool to see Google shaking up telecom. Um, it's a solid service. I mean, they use 
the the international service is good the the gigabyte usage is a little high um, but when you're walking around with a Google Fi device you actually tunnel into other people's Wi-Fi businesses automatically it does a Google security feature as well on the pixels so um, it's it's a sweet uh, it's a sweet gig and it's nice to see so, it kind of expanding do you use this this application or this thing yeah I use this service this is our cell phone service and what do you think about it uh, I think that we've had a couple issues with text messages and then uh, basically it, you know you have this Fi support line um, and it took 30 seconds and they called me and we worked it out and it just happened to be like a a one-time system system glitch kind of like you know if your if your cable modem at, at home does a spike of weird stuff and then Time Warner or Comcast or whatever has to reset their stuff it was just like a, a five minute outage and uh, that was the only thing we've had a problem with and I've had this phone service for now uh, going on almost two years so it's pretty good in my opinion I would give it like if I were to compare for price and for performance and all that I'd probably give it like a 9 out of 10 nice pixels approved guys you know go so, get your phone. Yeah, there you go well there you go you guys first hand first hand experience with this with this so let's see here and Firebird has an interesting point from chat. He's saying Apple will never allow it. They will restructure it and market it iFi. It will cost $400 up front and then $30 a month. And Firebird, you're not wrong. And they'll market it in such a way because this isn't being properly marketed to anyone. There's no, I mean, there's some Google Fi commercials, but I think it's because when I watch like web TV, like streaming off of like ABC or Fox or whatever, um, yeah, I think it knows already that my AdSense is that I'm interested in this. So I see a couple of Google Fi and Pixel Pixel ads, but uh, most of the populace who uses an iPhone doesn't look at anything normally. I'm just judging everyone that uses an iPhone. I know that, but um, they're all sheep. So they don't look at anything. They're, they're, they're just going to look at the iPhone, or they're going to look at the Apple Store window display that says "Get iFi now," and then they're all going to get it. And that's gonna be it. Damn, you know? I just have to clarify. I have an iPhone because it was free. Oh, Don't judge me. And hey, in KSM, respectable cast, KSM. KSM, oh, I, I also have an iPhone, and mine was uh, also free. There you go. Firebird yeah. also has an iPhone, but paid for. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, an Android. Firebird actually it uses Verizon towers. No US Sprint. Towers? Yeah, oh, it uses Sprint, Sprint towers, yeah. US Cellular, and T-Mobile. So we may actually be able to get that up here. Yeah, the, the coverage, I, I think if you guys are where you think I I'm not going to say on the podcast where you're at, but if you if I think I know where you're at, yeah, I think you guys are fine. We're at the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, then you, sh you should be good. <laughs> if you want, I can I can throw a sim at you and you can try it. Yeah, we can try it sometime. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, next article. We're almost done, guys. Keep it going, keep it going. Alright, All right. now this one is a serious, major serious issue. Alright. You're cutting out again, buddy. Yeah, stop, stop, push to talking. Just hold that thing down, no. man. No, no. You, you gotta no. stop twitching when you're holding the push to talk about I can't help He's it. He's just excited. I've got problems. <laughs> oh, that's right, the TBI again. Okay, sorry. About I, that. I got, I got issues that I need to resolve. Now, there's something about seeing a virtual thing in your mind. And, it's not... and I tried it, and I didn't really understand it, but I thought it was cool. Wow. You know? Wow. So someone actually who knows what they're talking about with this should probably speak up, because I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> Okay. All right, Pixels, take it away, Pixels. All right, thanks. So, uh, so virtual <laughs> desktop. More about my hallucination. That's all, right. all I had. Back in, back in the corner, Curves. Back in the corner. Right, so, okay. so on the Oculus Store right now, you can get a an app for nine ninety nine called Virtual Desktop. Um, this enables you to put on an Oculus headset whether that be Oculus Rift, 
Oculus Go, um, the Gear VR, or even Vive compatibility, um, where you're able to basically uh, virtual desktop is a thing that that sysadmins or computer support guys use to con con connect to a computer remotely and, and work on it. Um, and it lets you actually connect to your computer at home while you're on the go because the Oculus Go is a uh, is a standalone VR headset. Um, when you connect to your computer, you actually connect to a complete 360 virtual environment, right? So you can connect and put on your headset. And then right now I would see what I'm seeing, which is my two monitors, right? But I could also put on as many monitors that fit around me in a 360 area. So this is like the one problem with it at the moment is uh, font resolution. It's really hard to read, you know, like 12 point font with current gen uh, VR headsets. But the Vive Pro, it finally is able to almost get there. I think it does 12, maybe 14 point. Um, so it's pretty easy to read, especially internet stuff. If you just kind of like zoom in, like you can do like control and alt and make this huge, you know, and read, uh, it, read it like a blind person. So if you did that on your, on your computer that was attached to your face, you totally read everything because now I can read the articles. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, the possibilities here are pretty cool. Um, being able to connect to your home computer and stream a video game, for instance, um, <laughs> internet's getting faster and faster, oh. so pretty cool. Firebird. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to create some sort of mobile mobile view on everything that makes it just <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, no, more of a fun. Firebird's uh, Firebird's making a reference to a guy at work. Oh, nice. And. Uh, he were he would not, he and I were talking about um, that ultra ultra wide curve T uh, monitor. You saw that right? It's like a forty five inch ultra ultra wide monitor. Oh yeah yeah that's sweet. Yeah, but um the problem with the ultra wide monitor, like I'm saying, is most games can't fit that screen window. So you have like these two huge borders on the side. Mm hmm. Yeah, pillar box or whatever is what it's called. I <laughs> yeah. guess. And he was all like, um, I'm pretty sure we could just code something really quick to make that work, right? To stretch the game. <laughs> yeah, there might be like two people on the planet that would be able to code that real quick. And they're in very, very high paid jobs, you know, probably working for governments and bunkers or something. Did, they, did he actually <laughs> think that was... Uh... Oh yeah, he, he thinks it's absolute easy. And I told him he's yeah. absolute, he's like the most absolute idiot in the entire world, okay. so... And I got in trouble for calling them other names. Oh, but... Pixels, grow back up. Ryan Reynolds, go. Yeah, so... so oh, look at that beautiful man. This, this picture on this article is referencing, I believe they're showing big screen VR, which is a way to watch, uh, to stream content from your computer or from providers to make like a virtual theater for your... Uh, so basically you put, uh. the, put the headset on your face and then you're seeing big screen movies. You know? So you and can it, have your own private theater. Then. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Nice. That's exactly why I had you scroll up. No other reason. Yeah. So upload VR. The guys who put out this article, they're saying that it's a must get. So if you have an Oculus Go or Gear VR and want to use your PC in VR, virtual desktop is, si is simply by far the best way to do so. Ease of use, image quality, latency, reliability, are all better than everything else. So if you're interested in that, definitely go out and get it, guys. So uh, I'm wondering if I, like, hmm, I wonder if that would be work work appropriate. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. As long as you're not like that guy that got caught in the library. Oh my gosh. Would it be more fun to be at work if you could do it as a video, like while you're doing your work? <laughs> you're doing the same thing in the would that make it more oh. entertaining i don't know man if you're flipping burgers with with a vr headset a burger, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like I, I don't mean like flipping burgers in mcdonald's i mean flipping burgers in like a four-star restaurant you know? yeah, burger king. But, like, you got like fryers and yeah you have ooh, to think about it like this you have like flames. temperature <laughs> gauges and clocks and whatnot on there that you don't have in, in real life, so it's got like, oh, 
Oh, achievement unlocked. 400 burn. Yeah, oh. that that is a thing though. Right? There, there's two things with it. One is tracking tracking movements for achievements and stuff like that because they're finding that you know this whole achievement generation is really like an, an achievement score. Achievements. So so if you if you make work with achievements or high score tables, then it's totally way better than normal workload um, and work you know efficiency. Um, but yeah, like. The other part of using VR headsets is like if you, and this is like a, a really weird uh, application of it, but if everyone's in VR headsets and the Oculus Quest has external tracking, so you'd be able to see, potentially with a patch, you'd be able to see other Oculus Quests walking around, right? And if they're not like, since since you can have an avatar that's anything, you know, you 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 can be whatever you want to be. Like, we could just have a bunch of Deadpools walking around. And if everyone was just walking around seeing Deadpools all the time, they might be, like, happier people. I'm just doing an example. You know, like, seeing, like, if everyone was superheroes or if everyone was was uh, was nice people, you know, and there wasn't, like, you know, everyone had this fake reality on top of everything. Like, you know, the world might be a better place or a fake version of its better self. But, uh, Yeah. So it'd be like that that game where everybody takes those happy pills. Yeah. Yeah, and Firebird bringing up another point: uh, security. So, a a headset is your own. You know, you can you can have your laptop open on a plane, and everyone sitting next to you in the aisle seat, the aisle across, whatever. Like, and behind you, they're all gonna see what you're working on, which is a huge problem. Um, but if you just throw a, uh, a headset on your face they can't see anything they used to have these uh i don't know if you guys saw those giant socks that people were putting on their heads so they could watch their tablet and uh and what yeah like there's these yep. there's these socks these giant cloth uh things that you you know it looks like a scarf but then you could just take it and you'd put it over your tablet and then you'd have like this tunnel where it was just you and your tablet or you and your your laptop and you could work <sighs> privately I've never seen that. Yeah, you Google it, dude. It's it's. A I would thing. totally make fun of people if I saw them on the plane with that. Yeah, and people do, and they put it up on Twitter. They're like, ah, oh, look at that guy. But at the same time, like he's the only one looking at his screen. So, all right, let's do. Let's I mean, do unless little... you're in one of those fancy planes with like the screens in the back of the headrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. like if you're on your laptop, still like people are. Yeah. Anyway. The really fancy planes, you know, you have like a, a wall around you and stuff. So you have your own private room, like that yeah. one from uh, that one from Asia. Yeah, well, even the smaller ones, not the private room, but like the ones where you have like the chair and it reclines all the way back, and like there's these it's, privacy yeah. privacy walls that go up to stewardess eye level. You know, like it's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, so last article, you guys cool with that? Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, so this is so we've moved from gaming to media to tech, or gaming from gaming to tech to new media, um, and this is kind of where we're in the new media section now. Um, anyone want to go over this? Or you guys want me to? So I'm trying to look for that uh, airplane thing. All right, cool. YouTube phenomenon makes serial hackers equals internet war feuding. Awesomeness. Go on, go. So, so if you lived under a rock for the last five years, you may not have ever heard of the name PewDiePie, but he is the most subscribed user on YouTube. Um, his channel, not including the Vimo whatever crap. Yeah, his channel, his channel has the most subscribers. Um, what happened was over the last, uh, I want to say, year, there's been a channel that has completely skyrocketed, and I believe they've passed PewDiePie now. Um, it's a it's maybe they haven't passed. I'm not sure. All right, we can do better research, I think. But um, yeah, so this is only 150,000 difference. So it it might look like he will he will be passed by this thing. So T Series is a channel that is a uh, a Bollywood pop song music video channel. So it has a, a really decent amount of potential viewers, and everyone's subscribing to it. And uh, it looks like that uh, PewDiePie might be dethroned as the number one YouTuber. Um, so someone in the PewDiePie network of the Brofist uh, ended up 
hacking or using a vulnerability existing in a lot of printers worldwide. And it made a message print out on all these printers. And it says, it's just a one page message. And it says, attention, PewDiePie is in trouble and he needs your help to defeat T-Series. Um, so it says, one, unsubscribe from T-Series. Two, subscribe to PewDiePie. Three, share awareness of this issue with hashtag save PewDiePie. And then tell everyone you know, seriously. And then five, the bro fist, which is like their symbol for their whole uh, community. And it's just like completely amazing that someone has used a vulnerability for this reason. <laughs> you know, like that's it, cool to see the, the social media part bleeding into uh, real life. Um, but uh, but it's pretty cool. So that's our new media discussion. I don't know. I don't know when uh, when T series will pass PewDiePie. Um, we were talking before the stream about I, I believe KSM. Did you have something on this? Yeah, it, it, they were they were saying that uh, it, but it like it's chemistry of YouTube being ruled by a company instead of a content creator. And that's what the issue he had. But I think it's just that he wants all the money for himself. I mean, he, PewDiePie hasn't been the most subscribed channel on YouTube for a long while. He's the most subscribed individual owned channel. Yeah. If he's going to have a problem with T-Series, who is definitely not that, then... He, he's got a lot of other channels that he's got to have a wage war with and have a problem. Plus, over the years, he has lost a lot of deals with the contra controversy cause. Controversy with controversy, the stupid yeah. jokes Comments. that people decided yeah. to skewer him with. and Yeah. Which, that's a whole other topic. But... And he's uh, at, at, different, at different milestones of subscribers. He's threatened to to quit YouTube too, which only drives up the subscriber count. And so he's, he's a pro at the, uh, the clickbait. I mean, he pretty much invented that on, on YouTube. Um, he has set the pulse for YouTube for a long time. Um, but yeah, you know, he makes a lot of money, but he, he gives a lot of it to charity. So it's not like he's a terrible dude. Um, uh, you know, anyway, uh, I mean, are you sure about that now? I mean, I mean, business and personal are separate. So one way or another. Yeah, the, the mobile game Legend of the Brofist is what Firebird's talking about. Um, yeah, it's it's just another thing, just an alternate way to get his name out there, you know? It's funny. <laughs> um, go ahead, Kesa. Uh, he just needs to stay with this channel and let it evolve like he's going to do it. It's like it's going to happen one or another. So it's, he just wants, I think he just wants attention. It's another clickbait thing for him. Mm-hmm. Here you go, Pixels. I sent you a link to that uh, that airplane one. Check it out. Though, in comparison to some other people on the on that site, I would prefer him to be more subscribed to them, honestly. With all the other yeah. controversies and things that have gone on with it, like I mean, there's yeah. Recently, there's been some disgusting stuff. Well, there's always been. Like discussing stuff on on YouTube, dude. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking like from really big channels in general. Yeah, the channel wars. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's not pretty. That that site I feel like is gonna die at some point. It's just the lesson. The lesson here, guys, is to be positive. Okay. Like, or be, be a positive and cynical, yeah. like I am. <laughs> Be a positive force in this world, even if it takes some negative cynicism to be, have your voice heard. Yay. I was included. <laughs> Yay. All right. So uh, I think that wraps up all the news. I just have a streamer shout out to do. You guys got anything else before we wrap up? No, that's it. Go ahead. Well, take a look at that. Uh, bring up that uh, airplane. You want me to bring it up? Yeah. yeah it, looks, it, looks like, it looks like a cruise ship um, type of cabin. You know, yeah, but it's just it's transposed airplanes. into an airplane, yeah. which is pretty awesome. Yeah, like, imagine good. flying around like that, man. You know, like from from Hawaii to New York in one of those, man. You just take a nap for the whole trip. 
Yeah, Firebird, the uh, the Google Fi thing, it's it's now enabled as of yesterday or the day before yesterday. That's where we got the emails. But yeah, will Apple shut it down? Yeah, they could. Yeah, that was that was a valid point. Calling it Apple, you know, Google has found a way around the uh, the telecom, so Apple could also. I mean, if they're getting away with non monopoly, you know, then it just sets a precedent, you know. So, but yeah, this uh, go ahead. Apple shut down uh, Google Apps of what? Like yeah, they've, they've done they've done that a couple times between Amazon not having YouTube and Google Maps not being used on iPhones and all that stuff. Like they they do this stuff all the time. So what don't they, what do they use then? Their turbo mapping. Uh, no, I mean right now Google Maps <laughs> Google Maps works on iPhones. I think I think it stopped for like seven days at one point a couple years ago, <laughs> and then everyone was like, "What do you mean? Like I don't even know how to get to work with Apple Maps." And Apple's like, "All right, rip. We tried." <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true it's true all right, all right cool you, so so let's uh streamer shout out over that, that let's, screen. let's wrap it up all right so uh streamer shout out this week is going out to uh dad got game which is actually dad x got x game um pretty cool streamer i i found out about him uh several months ago on the Ask Broman uh, podcast, he was talking about moving over to Mixer, um, and then he ended up moving over to Mixer. Um, and now he has nearly nine thousand followers, so he's had like huge success on the platform. Um, he listens to Professor Broman. I'm pretty sure we've previously uh, shouted out Professor Broman, um, but uh, but he gets it. You know, he's he's following everything that uh, that the Broman is saying. And he's proving that uh, that Mixer is a is a platform that someone can, you know, eventually, uh, you know, go full time on. And uh, and he's a pretty positive, dude. Like the energy in his stream is unreal. Um, anytime anyone subscribes to his channel, which is like six bucks a month or whatever, um, it's just a complete, it's complete mayhem. It's it's awesome. Um, not not to mention he's awesome singing. Yeah, so, so he has other things, like other incentives for the viewers. He gives allowance because his name's Dad, so he gives allowance to his whole chat. Um, and then you can use that allowance to have, like, 10-minute Q&As with him, or you can ask him to sing a song, and he sings, and it's just... It's uh, it's some quality uh, new media entertainment. Like, no joke. Um, it's, not, it's not really new media entertainment. It's, like, quality streamer interaction with their, their, their viewers, man. Kind of like what you do as well but on a larger scale right now at this point <laughs> yeah yeah totally i mean he is he is like exactly what i think you know like watching people like stare at people watching them play a game and they're just kind of like zoning out and zombieing down you know it's like it's one thing but being able to build a community the way he has um where you know obviously uh his community the legion comes first you know like he could be having the worst game night ever but he still maintains like a positive uh <laughs> a positive um environment for everybody you know it's just it's just really cool it's, it's a it's an awesome awesome deal so he gets our shout out uh, he's available at mixer.com slash dad x got x game um and then he's also on uh twitter and instagram uh with the same name i believe um so definitely if you see him uh, definitely drop my follow and hang out and get totally inspired with what uh, content creation in 2018 could be. Cool? Good. Cool. Good. Alright, so you guys ready to wrap this up, guys? Oh my gosh. Alright. I'm ready. All right, I'm guys. ready. Put me in code. Well, thank you again. Thank you again, KSM, for being an awesome co host and uh, uh, what was that? Stream director in the background there? I know, right? Creative director. It's... Yeah, creative, creative director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't like it when you when people mess up. We, we paid Iman. I, I know you're really trying, but we paid a lot of money for him. We can't. Yeah. It's okay, man. It's okay. You, you got to okay. get the title right, man. I, I mean, we got we got our special we got our special guest here. We want to thank Pixels for being our, our very special guest today. And uh, Kerbs, you got any uh, final notes here today? Nah, I'm just gonna play us out. All right, play us out then. <laughs> Yeah.
That's it. All nice. right. Pixels, you got anything you want to close out with? No, you guys you guys closed it good. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Release the mixtapes as Firebird. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you want more of this or if you have a recommendation for a different type of video to make. Like, sub, click the bell, all that normal YouTube stuff. But more importantly, I stream over at Mixer.com slash PixelsGetMe five nights a week. We'll be playing uh, a lot of Breach, but I also enjoy Diablo and any other dungeon crawlers or grindy games. The Mixer schedule is in the video comments below, but the latest schedule is always on Twitter at Pixels Get Me. If you like this content, please drop a follow over on Mixer as well, and hopefully you can catch some of my live streams. If I have a few videos that are related to this one, you should see them pop up over here. Feel free to watch some more stuff. You rock.